this day's off to a rough start. I'm 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 really bad hurt. Oh no, I'm I'm okay. I just I just put gas in the truck. Good morning, guys and gals. It's uh, a Thursday morning down here in Alabama. I am in Fayette, Alabama, or Fayette County, Alabama. We had storms all around the state the uh, past couple days. And we've got a little bit of a reprieve today. I think it's going to be cloudy most of the day. It looks like, well, I don't know, hard to tell. It's early. But uh, tomorrow we have a chance of severe weather. It's supposed to be kind of storming all day. So I'm getting the fish on the front side of a big front that's about to come through. Uh, we'll see how that uh, compares and contrasts to fishing on the backside of a, of a big uh, front like this. But anyway, I'm going to target some bass today. Hopefully we can get one to bite. Hey, y'all stick around and let's see what happens. Well, here we are, folks. It's a mighty pretty morning out here. I'm just throwing out around these uh, mats and such. Using a stick worm on a weightless Texas rig. I've had good luck in here before with that. And I'm a creature of habit. I'll keep fishing it until they quit biting it. All right, so I just missed a bass back here with the fluke. So I'm gonna try to throw back over there with a stick worm. No. Let's see if he wants the fluke again. A stick worm, weightless, and a fluke, they fish very similarly. The fluke has a lot more action and is a lot nearer to the surface of the water just by nature, the way you fish it. It looks like an injured little minnow of some sort. I would think a flute might work well in here. These bass probably don't see this lure a whole lot. There's not a whole lot of people fish with a flute for some reason. I tell you what, uh, when you find a fish and they're liking it, they will really, really tear it up. Man, I'm hearing fish crash like crazy over on that other bank. But I know they're over here too. Gotta find something they want. This is a frustrating morning so far. I'm hearing bass crash and big bass crash all around the shallows in this lake. And uh, the problem is this gook in the water. That stuff that's on my troll motor there. Uh, 
if I cast anything, even this stick worm, and let it and let it sink any, uh, I get I get caught up in that stuff. It's I don't know if this is just a phase this lake is in uh, since I was here last, but it's kind of taken over. I've had a couple of fish on, uh, but lost them. That was a clean cast, but the fish seem to be hitting right up on the banks, right up all in this stuff. And y'all have seen me uh, fishing this, this lake uh, like that in previous videos, but um, it wasn't this bad on the bottom. I could let, I could let it sink without getting caught up uh, and see, if I let that go to the bottom, every time, that's what happens. Just exactly what happened on that cast. So, I'm just dealing with it. Good night, that water's warm. And uh, just trying to fish close to the surface. That doesn't seem to be the trick today. Uh, they're not hitting this. There was a guy up there on the dam. He actually caught a couple of fish on a brush hog. I tried that and uh, didn't have any luck. I tried a fluke, tried a crankbait out in the middle. But we're gonna keep trying. Right now I'm gonna try to get this junk off my troll motor. I just missed another fish trying to get my camera on. Hit this swim bait. Good fish too. Hopefully I'll get to show you one in a minute. It's an odd day. It's really, really overcast. But it's cool. It's super cool. But the fish are eating. I hear them. I hear them jumping around the bank and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I get a hold of one every now and then. I just haven't been able to land one yet. I've landed plenty of this stuff. It's that little swim bait I'm using. That's from Cabela's. That's about my favorite swim bait. It's made by Cabela's. I've got a little one eighth ounce weighted hook and that's screwed in up there. Has a great action coming through the water. Oh man, I just had one come up, followed it right here to the boat. But he didn't get it. Goodness, I see a huge fish. I don't know if that was a bass or a carp or something. Pulled that swim bait right in front of its nose and it disappeared. Looks like the skies are about to clear for a little while. Let's see if that has an impact on the fish bite. Can't get them to bite. A what?
They're they're eating all over the place, but I everything I've ever caught them in here on before they won't hit. I've I mean I've hooked three or four, but I've been here since seven o'clock. I don't know what they want. Oh yeah, finally landed a bass and a bunch of stuff. Fishing the old frog. Well, I'll get him off. Pretty bass. Three, four pound bass, just like I always catch in here. On the scum frog. All right, buddy. Catch you later. So there are a couple guys back here uh, brim fishing. And, uh, Asked him if they'd had any luck and vice versa. And he said, well, get you an orange cork and put a, and put a hook in it. Because I just had a four or five pound bass come and swallow my cork and just held on to it. So I switched to the uh, old scum frog here. And we've got one so far. It was a great, great bite. I wish I'd have had it on camera. Let's see if we can catch another. Well, that last fish was just a textbook frog bite. He didn't really blow it up. He just came and swallowed it. When you're topwater fishing, there's two important things as far as how you work the lure. First off, when you cast it, let the ripples around it dissipate. I'm told that often a fish will come up under it and they'll be watching it. Once the ripples dissipate, they can see it better. And then maybe about the first time you twitch it, they'll often strike. Or they may follow it a little further. The other important thing is not to jerk to set the hook on uh, impulse, on reaction. Feel the fish on there. Don't just see the blow up and jerk. Make sure he's got it before you set that hook. That's hard to do. <laughs> Threw right in the edge of that grass. It looks like that frog just hopped out of there. See all these frog eggs in the water. I bet these bass have a feast out here at night, feeding frenzy. And they're seeing this one now and they're thinking, hey, what's that frog doing out? It's daytime, sun shining. Well, it's kind of like being a watermelon. I know watermelons grow around here, get ripe in the summertime. But if I see some watermelon and it's available to me, I'll eat it any time of the year. These fish are the same way. Come on, big bass. Be over there in those sticks. That'll be a good spot. 
I use straight braid, by the way, on all my top water rigs. A lot of people like to use mono or something that floats a little better, at least for a liter. But I just like the power that straight braid gives you. Like that bass a while ago, it might have weighed four pounds, but I had to drag in about five pounds of grass with it. Well, I had to break it loose first and then drag it in. Real easy to break mono and fluorocarbon copolymer lines when you're doing stuff like that. Good 50, 60 pound braid, unless it gets an abrasion or something on it. It is really, really hard to break. You'll break your lure before you break the braid. That's why I like it. Hey, look everybody, I got a new truck and a new boat. No, I just washed them for the first time in a long time. <laughs> Hope it'll crank. <laughs> Whew, it is hot out here. And there's some horse flies and some deer flies. Ouch! Do y'all have those where you are? We are inundated with them, especially this time of year. Well, wasn't much of a fishing trip today. We did manage to land one nice bass. I had uh, several other on the line. I don't think I got any of those on camera. But nevertheless, it was a very enjoyable day. It was a nice morning. I'm worn out now because I got home and uh, cleaned up my old truck here and uh, cleaned up my boat too. They were both in uh, dire need of it. Hey, I want to talk to you about salvation right quick. That's something I talk about a lot on this channel. There are a couple different schools of thoughts in Christian circles when it comes to salvation. One side believes in eternal security. Uh, the other side believes that uh, you can give up that salvation if you so choose. <laughs> Maybe I'm tucked somewhere in the middle, but this is what I know. The Bible says to work out your own salvation in fear and trembling. I heard a preacher say that he couldn't go to hell if he tried. I don't believe that. Um, and I've also heard uh, preachers preach that uh, basically once you've been saved and, and, and you make a mistake and you die and that sin is, is not confessed and, 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 and you've asked, not asked forgiveness for it, then you'll go to hell. Um, I don't necessarily prescribe to that either. There's a lot of things in God's Word that are open to interpretation. Not that they're vague, not that they're contradicting, but that's why we have, I think it's 6,000 and something different denominations <laughs> in the world uh, and, and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of denominations uh, in the Christian faith alone. Because we each read that same Bible and we each have our own unique convictions and we try to align with that denomination or that church that best uh, lines up with our with our beliefs and the conclusions we've come to reach after studying here's what i want to leave you with this is what i feel is the most important thing know that you know that you know that you're saved how then can you know that you're saved I believe each and every one of us knows in our heart if we're saved, if we're ready to meet Jesus Christ, if we have been born again. Yes, the Bible says that no man shall be able to pluck us out of Christ's hand. It also says he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Do you feel in your heart that you're saved? What if Christ had come back five minutes ago? Because one day, that's going to be a reality for all of us. But millions upon millions upon millions are going to be left. I believe there's great Christian people in all Christian denominations. I believe there's people who on that day are going to be sorely disappointed and shocked. And I believe a lot of them are going to miss the mark on that day across all denominations. If you would have a problem meeting Jesus Christ, if you would have any hesitation right now, if you knew Jesus Christ was coming back right now, then you need to be saved. You need to ask for repentance. I hope and pray that uh, somehow this message has blessed you. 
I know it's a little bit mixed, but that's the way the Bible is. It's not mixed, but we mix it up. God's Word is infallible. It's inerrant. But we have to study it to show ourselves approved and uh, reach our own conclusions and have our own personal relationship with Jesus Christ. No other man can do that for you. And I hope and pray that you all are saved and know that heaven is your eternal home. Hey, there's Dad's garden. We got some blackberries that are, well, I had to cut them back a little while ago, a couple years ago, and they haven't bounced back yet. We got some pepper there. We got some okra trying to bloom there, some tomatoes. That is a fig tree. That is okra. That silver queen corn. That is a watermelon. That's a row of strawberries. That's squash. And some more tomato plants. These are potatoes. They don't look real good, but that's what they do after they've got potatoes on. Got a little peach tree planted over there. Dad works hard in this garden, and we have a we're blessed every year with good fruits and veggies. Expecting a bunch of rain tomorrow. Uh, hoping we'll get an inch or two. I believe the garden can use it. That has been watering, as you can see. I sure appreciate you guys having been with me in this episode. Tune in next time and we'll have us a brand new adventure waiting. Hey, may the good Lord bless you. As always, remember, God loves you and so do I. Until next time, I'll catch you later. Bye-bye.